My buddy Graham was sentenced to 27 years in prison for nonviolent property crimes. What that means is he was going to spend nearly three decades in prison until a recent law expanded good time for nonviolent offenders. So now he's going to be able to get out after a little over 16 years rather than the 27 that he was supposed to do. But in addition to the fact that he's been away from his family for so long because of the decisions that he made, he now owes over $200,000 in court costs, fines, and restitution. And the restitution part makes sense, right? He stole things, he has to pay those things back. The court costs and fines are often problematic, though, because we want people to get out and succeed. And it used to be that you couldn't even get a driver's license until you had paid your fines off. And then they made it where you couldn't get a driver's license until you had a payment plan set up, but you had to have secure employment to be able to do that. You often couldn't get secure employment until you got a vehicle and got to transportation. And now they've made it to where you can get a license without concern about your court costs and fines, which I think is really important because what they've shown is it allows people to get to work and allows people to essentially work a little bit job and not get in trouble. But in his case, you know, 16 and a half years later, the businesses and the people that he stole from, obviously they need their money back. It would have probably helped them to get that money back a lot sooner though, right? Like if we had prioritized making sure that they got restitution at the time or that they got restitution earlier or that paying back the money that he stole was the priority rather than punishing him, well, they probably would have been a lot better off. I remember I had one guy comment on a video that he had had somebody break into his store, steal a bunch of stuff, and he told the cops, all I want is it back. I want it back or the money for it back because I want to be able to continue to run my business. Like, I don't want to see these people go to prison. That doesn't help anybody. And if they're in prison for 10 years, I won't be able to get my stuff back until they get out and pay restitution 10 years later. And the judge gave them 12 years. And it's like, who does that really help? Does that keep society safer? Well, maybe if that person is just determined to continue to commit crimes and continue to steal things, it makes sense because we're gonna stop them from being able to steal during that period of time, but we're not really giving them any more skills or training or understanding or different approach. So we're really just kind of putting off the period of time between when they're able to steal. Whereas if we really emphasize restorative justice, which is a whole process that's involved in essentially making people take accountability for the crimes they committed, putting them in the same room after a long preparation process with the person they stole from and having them listen to the experience of losing this or their fear or their fear of being able to provide for their family or all the very real human things that people go through. Because people think property crimes are harmless or, oh, I only stole from a corporation. And while it might be written off on a, on a balance sheet, there are a lot of situations where it's not harmless, where it causes incredible amounts of stress and incredible parts about incredible difficulties in those people's lives. So I think that's a very valid thing. And I think by simply focusing on punishment rather than restoration or restitution, we're invalidating the needs of the victims of those crimes. Like in my case, so I had a little over $4,000 court costs, fines, restitution, all that when I got out. And one of the first things that I did was take some of the money that I had saved, get somebody to co-sign a loan, and I paid those off. And there were two reasons. One, because I wanted to do it because it was the right thing. And two, because I was hoping it would allow me to get off probation sooner so I wouldn't have restrictions on travel and other things going on. But I was only in a position to do that because I was very fortunate, because I had a family that supported me, because I had people that gave me opportunities, because I was able to get work. Had somebody not been able to get transportation or not been able to get the basic things they needs to get on their feet, they wouldn't have been in a position to do that. But again, does this really make sense to put these like kind of burdens on people? Shouldn't we say, well, we're gonna let people work it off, or hey, we're gonna give people meaningful employment while they're inside, or for the last year or the last six months of their sentence, so they gain a practical skill they can put into use as soon as they get out. They learn some uh, uh, essentially like coping skills about the workplace. They learn how to get up and go to work every day because most guys that are in prison don't get up and go to work every day. They sleep in, they watch TV, they don't do anything because there's no real structure. And then additionally, they would be able to save money. They'd be able to make money for that six months or that year, and they would be able to use that to pay off court costs and fines. They would be able to use that to pay uh, uh, the, essentially the things that they need to do from their past, as well as be prepared for the future, have a deposit for an apartment, have money for a vehicle, have the things they need. But instead, we have a system where you get down to the end of your sentence and you're still not eligible for work release or level one if you have violent crimes. You're still too dangerous to be you know, out on a work career, even at a level one institution with the, within the fence, but the day you get out, there's no supervision, there are no fences at all. It doesn't make any sense. If we're not trying to transition down people who are going to be released into lower security and greater amounts of freedom and greater amounts of responsibility, we're not actually preparing people for release. And then hitting them with the, these huge fines or these huge restitution fees when they get out, rather than allowing them to pay that down while they're in, is essentially like, all right, you're gonna have trouble getting housing because you're a felon. You're probably gonna have trouble getting a job because you're a felon. Now you're gonna owe a tremendous amount of money. This is limitations on what you can do with your life. This is gonna affect your credit. This is gonna affect everything you do moving forward as you try to enter the world as a productive citizen. What we've essentially done is created a system that often makes people feel like they're trapped. And it doesn't mean ultimately that they are trapped. It doesn't mean that there are no options because there are, but not highlighting those options and not making those options more prominent or more uh, accessible is essentially making it more likely that people will fail. 
And if we actually want people to get out and succeed, if we actually want people to get out and become productive citizens, which is the whole point of prison, like you've learned from this period of time that you've been away, you've been punished, you've been rehabilitated, now you're out. But we say that, but ultimately there's still this culture of like, I'll never trust that guy again. Well, why did we let him out of prison? Like, if you're not gonna treat him as a person, if you're not gonna give him the same opportunities and responsibilities as a citizen, if you're not gonna allow him to vote, why did you let him out of prison? Why don't we just admit that those people wanna punish people forever for whatever they've done, whether it's nonviolent or violent or you know minor or serious, there's some people that just wanna punish other people for whatever reason, and really they don't have a place in making the decision. Because if somebody is only focused on punishment and not on rehabilitation and not on what the victim actually needs and not on the larger societal issues, they're essentially like a three-year-old, like, I don't like you, you're in timeout, you're stupid. It's the most immature and irresponsible and ultimately uh, counterproductive thing that we can do to people. So as long as we still have that mindset in any place, in the corrections process, in the criminal justice process, we're holding ourselves back and essentially living in a medieval time set.